Britain has more work to do to understand why COVID-19 has a disproportionate effect on black and ethnic minorities, Health Minister Matt Hancock said on Tuesday. International donors promised $1.35 billion in humanitarian aid to Yemen on Tuesday, United Nations aid chief Mark Lowcock told in a pledging conference to help the war-torn country. Dubai will allow the full reopening of malls and private businesses starting on Wednesday, its media office said, after the gleaming United Arab Emirates business hub began easing restrictions last month. Fewer than 1 in 10 of coronavirus test samples collected daily in Afghanistan are being processed, officials said on Tuesday, and of those more than 30% are consistently testing positive, suggesting a high and hidden number of infections. Philippine President Rodrigo Duterte has suspended his decision to scrap a two-decade-old troop deployment agreement with the United States due to political and other developments in the region, his foreign minister said on Tuesday. U.S. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo and a senior congressional leader have reprimanded China for bullying behavior towards India during a military standoff on their disputed border. At the Dadawan restaurant in the southern Dutch city of Maastricht, an unusual group of new staffers has been brought in to help after the Netherlands eased its coronavirus lockdown this week. Do you know who they are? Robots. It is too early to be able to exclude some international travelers from quarantine measures due to be introduced next week to prevent a resurgence of the coronavirus, Britain's COVID-19 testing coordinator said on Tuesday. Britain's government will not compromise on fisheries or demands from the European Union on level playing field guarantees of fair competition, a spokesman for Prime Minister Boris Johnson said on Tuesday. Britain's house prices fell by the most in more than 11 years in May, as the coronavirus crisis hammered the market, mortgage lender Nationwide said on Tuesday.